these tables like this are some of my favorite places to find stuff. Everything is the same price, $5 for anything on these lids, just like this U.S. military lock here. I love the tables with little box lids and things like that. Um, I'm big into glasses. They look like they could have been gold filled. Just the frames on a gold filled pair of lenses like this or a pair of glasses like this might get you 40 or 50 bucks. So he wanted eight bucks for them. Too much not being marked. If it was marked, say 10 karat gold filled or something, I would have bought it, but it's not marked. It's always taking a chance. Tables like this with just a bunch of coins and stuff I do very well with. Most of those are tax tokens though, so not quite token, regular tokens, but always look at everything you see. You never know what you're going to find at places like this. Pencils, a dollar a pencil. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I've made hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of dollars just off of pencils. I did get quite a few pencils from several of these booths here, so there is a lot of value in these sorts of things. Now Fisher Price, you can't go wrong with Fisher Price. The two Barbie houses aren't too bad, but they were only the houses. They were missing all the inside, the furniture and the whole works. Love toys, of course, can't go wrong with some of them if the prices are right. Old signs like the Blue Plate Diner, rather interesting. Uh, lots of advertising pieces we did see. Silverware is something that I always look at. You never know what you're going to find in some of those. Those were all the same pattern and they were all new, so really wasn't worth my while. Now this had 10,000 plus people there while we were there. This was still early, it was still in the preview time as well. Some buckles, nothing really spectacular. There's an old G.I. Joe Jeep with a little carry along behind it. Um, there's the small G.I. Joe, Lego clocks, some Star Wars items as well. Now, I looked at some uh, vintage Barbie clothing. The clothing itself sometimes can go for a lot of money. We've sold individual clothing pieces for 50, 60, 100 bucks before. So you never know, just you gotta keep your eye out while you're out there. I always look through the cases. Usually the small stuff that I like are usually in the cases. Some other cases here. Lots of interesting little small stuff. That's usually where the money is, at least for the stuff that we sell. Turtle figures, some action figures. That was really about it over on those tables. Hey, it's Don. As you see, we did go to a giant flea market. I did find some incredibly cool items, some valuable ones. We're going to talk about one specific one from the 1920s that's a phenomenally scarce, rare advertising piece with a character on it. Now, this might look a little odd, but this is called Happy, and this is the Hot Point Happy Man. There's a different version of this later on, but this one dates to the 1920s at the very, very latest. This piece right here. The character was probably used in the 30s, maybe even into the early 40s, before they changed it sometime in the 40s into a little boy that looks like a devil. That's the tone on this one. Now, I have a couple of these. This is honestly the nicest looking one of these. Now, what is it? Let me turn it over and see if you can figure out. Now, wait a minute before I tell everybody what it is. But right up on the top, some of the words that are used in here should dictate what this is, as well as this right here. This is probably the biggest giveaway to me, what this is. Now, I'll let you look at it for just a second here. It's good that you can figure out something on your own without me telling you because you'll be better off. If you can figure out something based on what you're looking at, that's what you want to be able to do. Without further ado, let's just tell you what this is. This is a flyer that would have hung on some of the equipment, uh, uh, st stove, uh, refrigerator, something in the 20s. This would have hung in the store on something. It's an original. It's very, very scarce. How many of these survive? Now, what gives this away? Ask any employee. This is only meant to hang on a piece of appliance from them in their store, in one of the stores. Now, what's also interesting is it has Central Illinois Public Service Company. 
This is like the light company, and you could get it in payments. So a dollar per month on your light bill through these folks here, which, again, ties this back to the 1920s. They didn't do stuff like that later on in the 40s and past. You wouldn't have seen something quite like that. Extremely, extremely scarce. Any sign, hanging tag, or anything with any character on it from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, probably even into the 70s, is going to carry some form of value. I don't care if it's for Sherwin-Williams paint, um, uh, Fry Daddy from the 30s or 40s, uh, a broom or anything. If it has a character or something really good on it like this, it could hold some good value. So again, it's something that I would always nab up. Now, I have almost nothing into this one and several more of these. I may be able to iron them out, the other ones, and make them look almost as good as this. But this one single piece of paper here will probably get me 95 bucks. It's not an exaggeration. There are very, very few pieces of anything up on eBay with Happy the Hot Point Dude on them. It's just not something that shows up because of the time frame. There's almost no pieces of paper like this, these sorts of flyers, advertising flyers, that would still exist to begin with. I do run into some. Soda shop collectibles like this are usually some of the more common ones. Fresca has some uh, bottle hangers that would advertise a Trini Lopez record, and I run into those fairly often, believe it or not. There's some character ones that were meant to hang on like a syrup bottle or any of that stuff. Anything that was meant to hang in a store are extremely scarce. I don't care what name brand, what anything it is, they're almost impossible to find because when the sale was done, when they weren't offering the promo, these were usually discarded. And you won't find them laying around. Any that have these oddball punched out holes usually are a hanger. It's a hanging advertising flyer brochure or something along that line. Any of those. I don't care what they are. I have had them for Firestone tires. I've had them for tire pumps, um, irons, electric irons with characters on them. Any of that stuff is highly collectible. The older, the better. This is probably about the oldest you'll probably run into in any decent condition, probably from the 20s. I almost never run into anything this spectacular, this nice of a condition from the 1920s that's original. Original, no doubt whatsoever. You can see how it's printed. Uh, it, it's, it's just a fine, spectacular piece. Let's look at a few other items that show Happy himself so you can get a little bit of an idea on some of the value on character related to Hot Point. Again, these are appliance makers, Hot Point in general. So we're just in my seller hub here. We're in eBay and I'm on Terapeak. I'm looking through Terapeak right now. Now I've just typed in Hot Point and I'm only looking at collectibles and advertising. That's it. So collectibles and then narrowing it down from there to advertising. That's all I'm looking at here. Some of these you'll have to just discard because obviously a wall oven that works isn't going to be in the same line of what I'm looking for. The very first one, unfortunately, it's older than 30 days and we cannot look at it, is a Hot Point Happy the Hot Point Advertising Appliance Man Doll. It's a doll that's about 15 and 3 quarters inches tall. It is this figure that we just showed you that this doll is from. Here's another one, 1930s, Happy the Hot Point Guy. Same basic principle, same everything. This is a wooden jointed one. This is similar to the Superman that you'll find from the very late 30s, early 40s era. It's the same basic thing. It's a gessoed wooden jointed figure, and um, it's about the same size in all honesty. It might even be made by the same company. I'm not sure if Cameo made them or who, but here's another one here, another doll. Here's another advertising stand-up sign, same character. Unfortunately, again, these so seldom show up that there's only a few that we can look at in the sold section. Another one. Again, these all date to a certain time frame. Now, here is the same dude, the same Hot Point Happy on a small tag that would have been for an appliance. Could have been for anything. It's a generic tag. 95 bucks. Any type of item that would have hung in the store itself will garner more money. It's better than just some random item that would have been mounted anywhere. The store-only specific items are what you really want, like the counter display and things like that. Now, here's just one more, and this is just Hot Point Happy. We're just going to look up to see how many 
are of Happy himself. Now we're going to show you a character version here in just a minute. This isn't technically the same one. This is the devil one we'll show you, but there's only a very few up here. Now here is a good example. Now there's the Seal Test Mr. Cool advertising figure, as well as next to him is the devil, the Happy Hot Point Devil. It's a little boy. It looks more along the lines of almost like a Richie Rich or something, but it's a it's the same character. The logo is just different because this is 30 plus years newer than the one that I have. Cute was better. Cute pushed things. So they got rid of the the male figure, the older gentleman, and they used a child. You can see Seal Test here used a cartoon character of a walrus to advertise, and that was Mr. Cool. So it's not nearly as collectible. These were actually made in more quantity. It's not a store advertising piece. This was a toy that was something that a lot of people could get. It wasn't some random piece out there. Know the difference between a piece of paper that's advertising like a flyer poster as opposed to a mass-produced item. The mass-produced items will always go for less. An advertising item that was meant to be thrown away when the advertising promotion was done are always going to be worth more money. So the bottom line is I would pass by any of those new figures other than the doll that we showed you and go for this first. A puppet or anything else like that would be mass-produced even if it was only something that was a mail away, it would still be far more produced than a one-time sale in one specific store for some uh, waffle iron that had a tie-in to the Central Illinois Public Service Company. That's the light company in the local area in the 20s and very early 30s. So it, this has a double tie-in too. The electric company is partial to tie-in. I'm surprised it's not tied in with Reedy Kilowatt or something like that, but really nice item here. Look out for stuff that's odd, bizarre, that wasn't made to last. A puppet was made out of vinyl, plastic, and cloth. They're made to last. A flyer is not. It's something that would have been thrown away, discarded, as I said, and that's the key factor why we're putting at least 95 bucks or better on this. I will not be surprised if this doesn't sell fairly quickly for the top dollar, whatever I happen to list it for. We may even list it for $125 and just see what happens. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.